What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Cesar, and we are talking about SwiftCoin today. We're going to do a little bit of an in-depth analysis going over the technicals, uh, price action, where, where we can see like the price move, you know, how high can it go? When will it start moving up? Is it going up now? You know, all those all those questions based on price action. And then we're also going to go over the uh, the fundamental stuff. Yes, I realize the music is on. If it's distracting to you, fret not, because we will be pausing it in just a moment once we get past the intro here. Um, on the note of the intro, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. I talk about various cryptos on this channel. Um, there are a few favorites that get a little bit more regular coverage, but... I did make a video recently on SwiftCoin and I said that I would do a more in-depth kind of analysis on it. So uh, that's where that's where we're at now. So anyways, guys, I think I'm going to pause the music there. I think we're going to get started. And again, I want to start with the TA side of things. So we're looking at SwiftCoin here on Coinbase. Now, this is not the entire history of uh, SwiftCoin. Let's see. Swift. Oh, yeah. Let me see. Oy, oy, oy. Needed that. So <clears throat> I want to say, uh, you know, I've, I've seen and I was actually going through on my on my trials and tribulations of doing uh, some research on SwiftCoin. I noticed that there was a cryptocurrency channel, a YouTube channel that talked about crypto. Um, I noticed them talk about how SwiftCoin's market cap was about half of what I saw it to be. They made their video about three weeks ago. So I was like, did it really like go up that much? Like I'm looking at the price and I'm like, I, I mean, three weeks ago it was still up here. So I'm like, why did that happen? And if you look at uh, coin market cap here, you can see the supply, the circulating supply says 4 billion out of 10 billion tokens. Okay, 4 billion out of 10 billion tokens. On CoinGecko, it says, 8.9 billion out of 10 billion. So I think that's something to notice, you know, uh, $53 million market cap versus what's reported here as a uh, $23 million market cap. That That's a pretty sizable difference. To be fair, you know, fully diluted even, even if it were to be fully diluted, that's a $60 million market cap is still relatively low. If this thing were to catch any kind of traction that some of these people out here are promoting, um, Absolutely, absolutely, it could see a 100x, a 1,000x even, a 1,000x. Put that in perspective. So a 10x would be essentially from from the fully diluted value. A 10x would be a 600 million dollar market cap. A 100x would be a six billion dollar market cap. Very achievable, especially for a coin that's been around as long as this thing has. Um, which would then mean if that's a 100 mark, 100x at six billion dollars, a 1,000x would be at 60 billion dollars. Now I'm saying these numbers and a 1000 X sounds great. Who wouldn't want a 1000 X, but like, let's put it into perspective as to what that would mean. It means if you invest a thousand dollars, you would turn it into $1 million at a $60 billion market cap. That would be if it's fully diluted. So it would actually be greater than a 1000 X based on the current market cap. And I am going to go off of CoinGecko instead of coin market cap. I trust CoinGecko's numbers a little bit more, but tomato, tomato, whatever. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know why there's a difference there. I know they do things differently, but I'm going to go off of this one because all in all, I do trust CoinGecko more. And uh, I also think, you know, why not be more conservative? Why not? If, if it is a $23 million market cap, cool. Let me be surprised that I'm, that, that I'm being too conservative. But all that to say, guys, a 1,000x on something like this is possible. And the main reason for that is because if we look at this, because that would be a $60 billion market cap. And I know that sounds insane and it is insane. It's a very big market cap, very large market cap, but it is achievable. We've seen plenty of cryptos uh, achieve that kind of status, um, especially coins that have been around as long as this thing. This thing's been around since, it's actually been around longer than this. It says 2018 here. It's been around since 2017 to my knowledge. And you can see for a large portion of it, we had an, an initial sell-off, right? It's actually a very, uh, very quick, very brief sell-off if you think about it. Um, although the chart does go back further, to be completely fair. Maybe, maybe on coin market cap it has more history. Let's see. Hold on. It doesn't have all of it. Well, it says it says like January of 2018, so it might have might have more. It just has a little bit more on coin market cap, but uh, and, and it was at higher prices, so it definitely had an immense dump off. Um, but it's really been range bound. It's been accumulating for a long time. Um, 
and you know here there's no real spikes in volume at least that's not what it looks like if you look at it on coin market cap it does look like there were some key spikes in volume coming off of like low points um, which you do want to see in an accumulation phase but here it kind of looks a little bit more averaged out I don't know I don't know how they go about it but uh, looking at it here on coinbase you can see that there definitely was some higher spikes in volume you know at, at this phase here um, right here at this phase here one of the like higher points in this accumulation phase and then at there the highest point and volume is starting to build as we're breaking out of the accumulation phase now this is key this is actually a really good sign it definitely is and I am going to get you guys I am going to get into the fundamental stuff which I think is a lot more interesting just because I've already gone over this technical stuff on my last video but I've got a little bit of a background now um, I want to say I'm a bit more bullish on swift coin than I probably would have assumed I would be but I also want to be cautious here, okay? I want to be cautious because there are a lot of points that I'm going to bring up that other people have brought up. I've done my research, uh, you know, looking at it through through their website. I've, you know, tried to Google as much stuff as I can and read up as much stuff as I can today. And I also uh, watched a couple YouTube videos that I thought were interesting. I'm going to give shout outs to those people. You can actually see them uh, up here, but I'll, I'll give shout outs to them in just a second. Um, to, to be fair, the weekly RSI is very strong. I, it's, a, it's a really nice look. Um, and with what it has right now, for what it's got going for it, it almost looks kind of like an ascending like channel like this, right? It's pretty clean. You could come down and that's fine. You could come down lower. You could bounce off here off the overbought zone. Either way, whenever, whenever it is that you do bounce, whether it's here or down here, likely this next run up will probably be one of your last, like for, for a certain amount of time, for, for a little bit of time before you consolidate again. And the reason why I'm saying that is because, you know, obviously in the RSI, you can't go past the 100. So, so inevitably like this, this channel can't continue forever. Um, you are going to break out of it. And I would assume after breaking out of an upward sloping channel, you would see, especially on the weekly, you would see a longer phase of consolidation. When I say longer phase, I just mean something that's, you know, anywhere from like a month to four months, maybe more months, but, but something like that, probably a month to four months is what I would assume. Um, you just broke out of this very long phase of accumulation, which actually goes back past this chart's existence. Uh, you know, consolidating after a breakout is very normal. And whenever you consolidate, like this was essentially consolidation, I don't think you're going to consolidate that long. Um, but you, again, one month, four months, maybe more months, something like that. Um, after all, you did get a higher weekly close here. No, the prices were not higher. They were lower, in fact, on, a, on an overall basis, but on a closing basis, they were higher. And look at the drop off in volume you had. So you had the breakout move. You might need to regain your bearings and that's okay. That's really okay. You know, and I wish, I really do wish I had a chart that had more historical data. Um, I can't, I just can't find anything. I don't know, HTX, which used to be Huobi. Oh yeah, there you go. They got some more, 2020. But you can see, you know, um, actually it looks like a breakout move on Coinbase, but like really looking at this, and that's what I keep forgetting, it's actually this whole phase. It's debatable that we might even still be in the accumulation phase. Now I wanna say, just based off of this, the way that uh, CoinGecko has it here, the way that CoinMarketCap has it here, I would identify this accumulation phase like at the tops here. This was like a fake out breakout back in April of, of uh, 2021. I would consider that kind of a fake out. So the real breakout, in my opinion, would have happened somewhere around this, uh, what is that, 0 0.003737 area. Um, oh, maybe actually, sorry, that, was, that wasn't right. Yeah, no, 0 0.003737, 0 something like that. Um, if not lower, if not maybe even around 0 0.0027. Um, so, you know, I definitely, this has the characteristics of that. It definitely has the characteristics of a breakout move. Again, just pointing out that this, in my opinion, is not keeping us, we're not still in the accumulation phase, right? We definitely are at prices that we've seen over the years. We still haven't seen new price discovery, um, new as, as far as like new all-time highs go or anything that we haven't seen in like years. But uh, um, <clears throat> I, I think we've broken out of the norm. I think we have broken out of the norm. So uh, just to be very clear, I'm, even though we haven't really broken out of this zone yet, we're still consolidating around it. I would consider it a breakout past essentially this point here. And I think if we had more historical data on this chart, we, we would see, and that, that's around that 0 0.0036, I was saying 0 0.003737 area, um, tomato, tomato, whatever. You know, we, we can see that we consolidated right here. We tipped the breakout point, consolidated, and then broke out. Um, not that much volume on HTX, but again, and we can compare it here if you're looking at it for what it's worth. Um, on this week, it says we had 
3.89 billion. But if we go to Coinbase, that same week we had 19.7 billion, right? And if you go back to HTX, 19.7 billion. Um, I mean, even your largest week here. Okay, 16. That was that was your largest week, but it was 16 billion. So. Uh, on this breakout, still some of the largest volume we've seen. But to be fair, also some of the largest volume we saw was coming back at this similar like fake out point, similar amounts of volume. But we probably have more volume here because we've got more exposure, not just on Coinbase, but on HTX, uh, Poloniex, KuCoin, Gate.io. I think they've got stuff going on with Bybit. I don't know. Um, or they might in the future. Um, but again, I don't, I don't know. I want to see... There's got to be something that has more historical data. Poloniex might be the one. No, it's not. Come on, man. That's more. At least that's more. OKX. OKX has all of it, doesn't it? Okay, there we go. Just doesn't have the initial dump from 2017. Okay, so that's nice. But you can see, okay, this is kind of what I was talking about, right? Like this was your breakout phase. You had a little slip, a little fake out here. I would consider that a fake out. I think you've broken out here. I definitely think you have. Um, and being that, again, you're seeing some of the most volume you've ever seen for this thing. Let's go to here. That's 23 billion. That's actually more volume down there than we have on Coinbase now. But I, again, I would say counter to that, I would say that being that we have exposure on more exchanges now, there's probably more volume overall, um, even though that's the less, the, the smallest, not not the smallest, it's just not the largest amount of volume we've seen on one exchange, 19.7 billion in a week. I would say in a conglomeration, conglomerate of all these exchanges and any exchanges that aren't listed here, we're probably we probably are seeing more volume. But uh, you know, it's debatable, I suppose. Are we? Have we broken out? Are, are we yet to break out? You know, is this a point right here, like? We're like near the breakout point, but we haven't done it. I would, I would very much think that we have broken out. We've attempted twice. This is the third time. You can see the readings on the RSI. It just looks different. It's more resilient overall. And again, with that listing on Coinbase, I think that that is significant in itself. Um, this could be the real deal. But with all that bullishness in mind that it is in a breakout phase, again, we're coming to the end of this bullish phase in the RSI. I think we're good for one more move up, but does it take us above 0 0.0078? That's a good question. It might not. And if it does, that's cool, but how much higher? I would doubt that it takes us too, too much higher. Um, and the reason for that, again, going back to the original chart on Coinbase here, the one that has the most volume, relatively speaking, um, we've, we've got less volume on this higher weekly close here. So we could go higher, but I don't think it'll be by much. I don't think we have the, uh, the gas in the tank to do that. And I do think that inevitably we probably will pull back to, uh, where is it, somewhere around here. I mean, yeah, somewhere around there, essentially. Probably, let's actually, it was right here. It was right at this like high point there. Somewhere right around there. So however high we go from here, we're, we're coming to a point in the weekly R side where, yes, we're showing strength, but we can't maintain this trajectory forever. We will have to break out of this upward sloping trajectory, and with that, we will see a longer phase of consolidation, right? This was a consolidation point here. I'm assuming it'll be longer than that. We're even consolidating now. We might have a little bit of a move up, and then sell down we might consult like, like who knows how it looks it might it might sell off fast you know we could just dump straight down to here come back up and then like literally wig wag between this whole zone maybe it moves up and then it just really takes its time moving all the way down to this line and then as soon as it touches it boom it just goes like who who knows how it's going to look but what i would assume is there will be lower prices to come for swift coin over the coming months um and it'll probably be boring We've seen the excitement. We have seen the most excitement this thing has seen uh, since, what was it, 2021, 2022? Let's go, was it OKX? 2021. This is the most excitement we've seen since 2021. Um, and these things, you can see they're very short-lived. Whenever we hit this overbought zone, it, it tends to mark a long phase of, cons of uh, consolidation afterwards. I don't think that after this high, we're going to perform like we did here. I don't think that we're about to stay under this white line for a very long time. I actually theorize that we will be above it for the first time. We will actually maintain prices above it for a considerable amount of time. But I don't I don't know how long it's going to be. I wouldn't assume that it would be all the way to the end of this year, which is like, you know, there. I wouldn't assume that we'd go throughout this whole range like this. But I would think that it could be sometime, you know, perhaps maybe in June, uh, maybe in July, maybe later than that. You know, it could we could wigwag all throughout like this phase of it, 
maybe like two thirds of this like potential square that we have, something like that. I mean, it's April now. Four months from now would literally be August. So it could, it really could be, would, would that be Q3? That would be Q3. It could be Q3 before this thing starts to get exciting again. And that's probably how it is with a lot of cryptos. A lot of cryptos are probably gonna be boring uh, for, the, for the foreseeable future. Um, I was thinking we were gonna have one last little rally upwards. I was thinking the party wasn't done yet. And technically I do think you've got a little bit higher to go before you start moving your way down. Um, but I could be wrong. Maybe you don't move higher. Maybe just maybe you are getting ready to start moving down now. Just with how resilient and where you are in the weekly RSI, I'm kind of assuming that you would see some, at least one more move up. That, that would be my thoughts. But how high is it gonna go? Probably not that high. I would be surprised if you got too far away from this white line. I wouldn't be surprised if you got above it uh, just, you know, too far above it, even, even above this high here, I wouldn't be too surprised, but like, you're not going to get all the way up to like one and a half cents or even one cent, you know, I mean, maybe one cent literally to a T is where you get to, but you might not, you could just as well have topped off there, maybe form a lower high from here, but nonetheless, I would expect in the immediate terms, you probably do move up, but just overall for the coming weeks and months, I think you will move down. All right. And the daily RSI actually, does look strong, does look resilient, but with this price action looking the way it does, it, it actually does set you up to move down rather immediately too. I, I could be wrong on that. That might have been it right there. This might have been that last little pump up, and now we're actually coming down because we did kind of even break this structure here, to be completely fair. Um, but still consolidating, you know, until until we get below these lows, we're still consolidating. Once we get below there, I think it'll confirm that we are we're in a longer phase of consolidation. Who knows how it looks? I would assume that once we hit this line, it's probably not just go time from there, um, but it might mark that we're near the bottom. So uh, if you're trying to buy this thing, if, if, if I was trying to buy this thing, and I might actually, I, it does have my interest, I'm not going to lie, I would probably look to buy it at around 0.0042 to 0.00357, probably closer to 0 0.0042 to 0 0.0038. Because again, three that 3737 area is kind of a, a point to, to watch as well. So, so I might say 0 0.0038 to 0 0.0042 is a good area to buy. We're at 0 0.006 right now. So let's just say we were to go all the way down to this line. That would be a 40% drop potentially. Going to the areas that I'm talking about, at a minimum, we'd see about a 30% drop to potentially a 37% drop, 30 to 37% drop from here. And I mean, that's fair, man. That, that's, in my opinion, that's pretty fair, right? Since October of 2023, we've seen a total increase of about a 9X. You're gonna chill. You're gonna, it's okay. You're gonna, ch it's, it's, it's totally fine. You're gonna chill. It's not a big deal. It's not a big problem at all. Um, and it'll probably be more than this. But it won't be, again, it won't be as big as like this whole range is here. Um, anyways, I feel like I beat the hell out of that. I'm, again, as, as bearish as I might sound, S, it's S-U-W-F-T. Um, I am pretty bullish on this thing, actually. I've, I'm kind of curious, I should say, on it. But it remains to be seen if it can prove itself. You know, it definitely has a lot to do before it proves itself. Technically, what it's doing right now it's just the same thing that it's been doing for years. Um, but the readings do look different. You are on Coinbase. There is more volume overall. Um, you know, there are a lot of good things going for it for sure. Anyways, anyways, let's talk about the, uh, the underlying kind of fundamentals here. So I want to give a shout out here to uh, Maximus Crypto. If you guys are curious and you want to know more um, on some of the stuff I'm going to say, because I'm a little bit less practiced, a little bit less, let's say, educated on these matters. You can check out their uh, video they made three weeks ago here. This one, that's what it looks like right there. Um, SwiftCoin, introducing the SwiftCoin, a deep dive with, I think it's Ruel B. Block or B. Black or something like that. I, for, I forget. Uh, or maybe it's Russell. I think it's Ruel. Or Ru Ru I, I, I'm pronouncing your name wrong, bro. If you see this, I'm sorry. But uh, And then Underdog Crypto. I want to give a shout out to him as well. Um, this video here that he made a month ago, this is the video that they specifically reference right here. You can find it. If you, if you type in Underdog Crypto, you go to videos. You can find it there. Um, and when I say they reference it, I mean Maximus Crypto. These guys in this video, they reference uh, this video. And there are some things that Underdog, you can tell this guy here, he definitely does his diligence. You can tell both both of these channels, um, they they seem like they do their diligence. You know, they 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 
they seem like they come from a place of like an educated opinion in my in my assumption. But but I will also say that there are a lot of conclusions that are being drawn. He he throws the dots out there and he makes those connections and it sounds nice and it and it, it makes sense. It really does make sense. But they are there are a lot of assumptions still. So when you watch this video, don't take everything that you hear as like it's it's a 100% guarantee. And I'm pretty sure he even says that toward the end. You know, he's like he he doesn't know what the future. No, nobody knows, right? You can be you can have the best idea. You can be the most bullish on something. You can do all your research and all the stars can align, and it can still never become anything. Like that's absolutely possible. But and and that's just what I'm trying to say is because he's. He is definitely, I, I would say he seems like an educated person. He's definitely done his research more than I have on this thing. Um, a lot of digging. Very impressive video, honestly. Um, both of these were good videos, but but I he definitely, I, I could tell he definitely did a lot of research here. Um, and what I want to go over is some things that he talked about in that video. So, so first off, let's see, what do we got? Oh, hold on. I kind of wrote some stuff down just to keep it in my in my head here. So yeah, first off, with SwiftCoin, you know, they claim to be a decentralized cross-chain platform for you to be able to do uh, decentralized exchanges. So it's a decentralized kind of exchange where you can swap coins, transact coins um, through their blockchain. What's nice is they do have their own blockchain. That is something that's bullish that most cryptos don't have their own blockchain. They don't. They don't have the uh, the nuts, the uh, the follow through, the developers, the team to actually come up with a product like that that actually works and is is uh, is not faulty. Um, I think it's definitely safe to say that these guys, you know, they've been around since 2017. It's safe to say that they're they're probably pretty secure, pretty solid to, to a certain degree. Um, though you know, with such a low market cap, who knows if if they've if, if they've attracted any interest as far as an attack goes or anything. I don't know if they've ever been hacked, um, but I'm assuming, you know, even if they have, they've probably fixed it. Because they, again, being around for a long time, I can't, I can't stress this enough, you guys, being around for several cycles in crypto and not just totally fizzling out. I mean, yes, you were, you were pretty dead, but I wouldn't say you just, like, like, you clearly had life throughout this whole time. You didn't create new highs, you didn't create new lows, and you weren't just flatlining, you know, there's a lot of volatility in here. Um, that's something to be said. Standing the test of time in crypto is is a testament in itself, right? But you got to do more than that. You've got to you've got to see progress. And it sounds like there's a lot of progress going on with this. But again, I want to touch back on the fact that they claim to be a decentralized blockchain, a uh, decentralized cross-chain, cross-border payment system, or not payment system, but but a uh, exchange, a dex to like swap things on essentially. Um, and if we look up, actually, I forget what, what was it? Hold, hold on. I got a two-year-old baby girl, guys. She, she just cried a little bit, but I think she's back asleep. I had to make sure that I didn't have to go get her. Um, I get very loud sometimes. I get a little bit excited. Um, is it crypto carp? I forget what it is. Let's just see. Hold on. 100 top 100 uh, swift coin wallets whatever it is um, and this this is something that un un underdog brought up in his uh, in his video you can see that um, he brought it up in his video for like a negative a potential negative here coin carp that's what I was looking at and I'm sure you can find it out on other things but if you look at this here wait this is for BTC no, no, no. List of top SwiftCoin wallets. It is on CoinCart, but I'm just instead of BTC, I'm just going to go to uh, SwiftCoin here. Swift. So you can see here that. Man, where is it? Why can't I've got it on my phone? <laughs> I wish. Let me see. Rich list. Maybe it's the rich list. Yeah, here we go. So you can see here top 100 holds, right? That's this red line and down. So the top 100 wallets makes up for, and you can see it gives you the percentage here, top 10 holders hold 67% of this coin. In his video, in Underdog Crypto's video, um, which again, I think is a good video, man. Shout out to Underdog. Shout out to Maximus Crypto again. Or is it Maximus Investing or Maximus? Why can't I find it? Maximus Crypto. Um, I think they do good work, but 
but he says that the top 100 holders, you can see here, back back in his videos a month ago, said 94%. Still pretty close to that. We're at 93.7% of holders um, or of, of the total supply is being held by the top 100 wallets. But to me, an even worse number, or like something that stands out even more is the 67% in the top 10 wallets. 67% of the total circulating supply is held by the top 10 wallets. It's not decentralized. It's not very decentralized at all. So they claim to be decentralized, but they're not. There's another thing that the whole the whole thing going on with this, you know, is, is again they claim to be like a decentralized cross chain, cross border uh, transaction, de decentralized exchange like method here. Um, but they also have a patent. They have they have a patent for the way that they do their swaps, and it's like, I it just doesn't that doesn't sound decentralized to me. Like you don't you have you have a patent, but you're decentralized. Like it you know that that it seems like a, kind of like a what do they call that? Like a fallacy or a uh, it's like a, it starts with an I, not not an idiom. Is it an idiom? What is what is? Oh, let me see. Define. Idiom. Group of words established are used that meaning non deductible from those the individual words. Uh, rain cats and dogs. Like I, I don't know, kind of, but not not. That's not exactly it. There's something. There's another word for it that I just can't think of right now. But but what I'm trying to say is it just seems it seems opposite. Like how are you going to claim you're decentralized when the top ten wallets hold 67 percent, the top 100 wallets hold 93.7 percent? And I actually went through. You can look here too and see that the top it's like 22 wallets. Yeah, they all hold like almost a percent or more, right? The top 20 wallets. So that's that's like a large, you know, in the very first wallet, 14, 10, I mean, literally the top two wallets hold 24, 25% in themselves. Top five wallets hold, let's see, what would that be? Six, 12, 13, let's call it 15 plus 25. So that's 40, 40%. The top five wallets hold 40%. Like that's, it's not decentralized, not in my opinion. Um, and then you have, you patent your information that, that seems like something that a centralized point of power would do. I'm, I'm getting hung up on this. I'm talking about this a little bit too much, but just on, on the way of things again, like if you read into Swift coin yourself and you're like, Oh, it's a decentralized system, you know, maybe take it with a grain of salt because it doesn't seem like it is at least not in my opinion. Um, there's another thing that underdog crypto here. And this is what I mean by take, take everything he says with a grain of salt. It's good information. It's good information. I'm not trying to belittle it at all. He definitely knows what he's talking about, but it's easy to get excited about a thing. And I, I don't know. And I don't, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to insult anybody, but I'm, I'm very curious to know how long he's actually been involved in, uh, in the crypto markets because, because in this, he, he references a, an article, I think from Bazinga, um, that says, Swift coin was a prominent coin back in 2017 in the 2017 2018 uh, IPO or ICO craze. Guys, I was around in the 2017 ICO craze, and I'm not saying that I heard about every crypto. I definitely heard about the prominent ones. This, I, I don't remember this thing. I, I just, I genuinely don't. There are tons of coins that are from 2017 um, that I don't know, but all the prominent ones, I, I was there, man. I've been around since 2015. Like, I, I don't, and maybe I had my head in the sand with just one coin. I'm not saying that if I didn't hear about it, it wasn't prominent, you know, but I'm, I'm just curious, like, you know, he was reading that off of a Bazinga article from, I think it was from 2021 or maybe it was 2023. Um, it was an old article, um, which is just awesome, by the way, going through old, like you can tell he does his research, man, does his digging, but there's just some things, again, I want to illustrate the importance of people can draw their own conclusions. People can see other people draw conclusions. And it's really easy to get excited about something and just think, this is it. This is everything. It's it. There's no way that this can't be glorious. You guys, I've been there. I've invested in those projects and they were great. They were legitimate. They had the right, they had the right people behind it and they still turned out to be nothing. And you know, for, for, let's be real for, for a very large point. And in fact, all of this thing's existence, it has turned out to be absolutely nothing so far. Okay. With a modest growth since October, not to, not going to lie. Um, with some of the most volume we've seen, you know, out of this whole thing's life, De you know, there's definitely some good things going on for the time being. But does it have the gumption, the cojones to continue, or is it going to flop like it's done every other time? Now, there are some things that are interesting with this. Um, 
you know, and, and I'm going to, again, touch back on underdogs, uh, underdog crypto here, his, his video, um, which is where he talks about, you know, there's a patent again for, uh, for swift coin in the way that it handles its transactions. And the person, uh, X, X, Xin Zing, X, X, Xin Zing. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but it's like X, I, N, X, I, N, G, something like that. Um, she is the inventor one of the inventors of uh, the SwiftCoin patent and one of the inventors of uh, this patent infidelity using, I think it's the patent for either it's either it's for FBTC, their Bitcoin fund, or it's a patent in itself for like other kind of uh, transactions. But the thing is, you know, again, talking about that, I'm, I'm just kind of curious. I'm kind of curious how, how, prohibitive these patents are for other companies because Fidelity filed a patent for their product FBTC, but Grayscale has their product GBTC, right? Like it, just because Fidelity filed a patent for F, FBTC, like doesn't mean, that just means that nobody, I would assume, can do things the exact same way that Fidelity does their stuff, their, their method or their approach of doing it. But there are obviously other approaches to do it because you have GBTC still. Um, even before it was an ETF, it was you know it was still a trust as well, um, and they were around first. So so I, I just wonder, reflecting that from like the Fidelity patent. And again, you guys, I'm talking about things that are outside of my. I'm I'm a I'm a TA guy. I'm a chart guy. This this is outside of the realm of my knowledge. Um, maybe you know maybe underdog. If you see this, or if if somebody who knows better than I can, better than I do, if you can inform me as to why this patent is so important or like how crucial it is. And I get the idea. I'm going to blow my face up here. The idea behind it is that to do this large cross border, cross chain kind of swaps and transactions that Swift coin, the Swift blockchain promotes and provides it, the, the idea, or at least from what I'm hearing, the dots that are being connected are that Swift is the only one to to be able to do this using like AI or using other uh, what, whatever method it is that they're going about doing it, which again, I'm, I'm not that knowledgeable in that, but I, I was trying to understand it as much as I could. But I just again, you know, I'm, I'm trying to give you basically everything that I understand about it, which still uh, is it's very little bit a very small amount. Again, if, if you guys are confused by anything that I'm saying, I'd highly recommend watching this video. It's an hour and a half long. I did watch it at one and a half of the uh, the standard rate. I watched it at a faster rate, so it ended. It didn't take an hour and a half to watch. Um, but if that's too fast for you, you know, you just play it regular at, at regular playback speed. But, but uh, what I'm trying to say is, I wonder how prohibitive these these patents are. I wonder how, like, like is it so specific that nobody else can use AI to formulate a optimal way? to swap and do cross-border transactions through cryptocurrencies or because that just doesn't seem right to me. That, that just doesn't seem right to me. Maybe they can't copy their exact same way of doing it, like their exact same protocols or software, but, you know, maybe, I, I don't know. I just, if anybody knows better out there, please help me out. Please leave a comment and educate me and educate everybody else. You guys go through the comments of this video because there probably will be someone, I would hope there's someone who, who, gives a detailed explanation. If not, you know, maybe find a, like find a video, look up on YouTube, look on, look on Google, try to figure it out uh, for yourself. Cause I definitely, I definitely wasn't able to uh, figure it out. It's not, it's not something that's in my wheelhouse of knowledge. And I just, I keep talking about all the things I don't know, but that's because again, guys, I don't know. And you don't know. And you know, as far as I know, like n nobody, nobody really knows. And he even says that here, like nobody knows if this thing is going to do well or not, um, it does sound interesting. Again, I'm, I'm being very skeptical here. I'm, I'm giving a heavy spoonful of skepticism here, a cup full of it, because when you watch these videos, it's going to excite you. When you watch Maximus Crypto, again, it's, it's this video down here from three weeks ago. Whenever you watch uh, Underdog's video right here, probably any and all of them, it's going to hype you up. It is, but you need to kind of... Cause I've been here before, man. I've not with this coin, but with other coins that they have all the right things. They have like, they partner with IBM. They're making new partnerships every week, you know, stuff like that. Not, not Swift coin, but like coins that have done this. They have the fastest transactions that the world has ever seen. And nobody even knows what coin I'm talking about. And that's, that's credits for those of you who don't know, if you've never heard of credits, credits, man. And that wasn't a prominent coin back in the day, but that was a 2017 ICO as well. Um, you know, it, 
sounded like a good idea. They're making all the partnerships they could. It seems like a legit project. To my knowledge, it was a legit project. They just never gained traction. And that's that's kind of the story of this coin here is it's just never gained traction. And there's more involving this than everything that I've gone over so far. Tim Draper is a big uh, investor in this thing. You know, he's probably one of the top 100 wallets. Um, there's a lot of things too that I just, I don't necessarily agree with. Not necessarily agree with, but I just don't see the big deal. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of talk about the symbolism of like the year of the dragon and stuff like that, but it's like I, you know, like I don't know. Maybe maybe they've been waiting for the year of the dragon to really pump this thing up. Maybe that was their plan all along, but that just seems a bit weird. And I know I know that the elites, or at least it's assumed that the elites, and I would assume as well that that they use symbolism in a lot of things. And that symbolism is powerful, and I get all of that. But to to base all of your money on symbolism, I I don't know, like. If if they really wanted to tell us that Swift Coin is going to be the next big thing, then why wouldn't they just tell us? Or if they don't want to tell us that, they want to keep it under wraps so that they can pump this thing up. And then whenever it's at its most high price, when I say they, I mean the top hundred wallets, the people who are holding most of the Swift Coin. If they're trying to keep it under wraps, why would they subliminally put out symbolism? Like that just doesn't it doesn't make sense to me. So I, I don't know. Um, I'm not really a big believer in coincidence, but I just I don't I don't know. The people the, the founders, the creators of SwiftCoin are Chinese in themselves. Um, so them celebrating Chinese New Year to me that doesn't seem like out of the ordinary. Um, but there are some interesting things. You know, he does he, again this this video, you guys. It, it is really interesting. Um, and this whole video that I've, I make, I, that I'm doing right now, I just keep essentially referring to this because I think it is something that everybody should watch. But I'm going to end the video there. This has gone on way too long, way longer than I thought it would. Um, I feel like I've rambled a lot. But again, I just there, there's some things that I'm just like, so what? Like they've got a patent. Okay, so what? They're still GBTC. Like FBTC's patent, as far as I know, was filed with the same person who filed the patent. Like for, for Fidelity, they've got their patent filed with the same person who invented or is part of the creation of the patent or or with swift coin blockchain itself swift blockchain itself uh Zhijin or what, what's her name what is her name man let's see i don't know it's like xin something man if you look it up on his video man underdog crypto's video one last shout out uh, he'll he'll be able to say it. Maybe maybe it's on their website. Let's see about company API company. Sure. Yeah, about the blockchain. That's okay. I don't need to know that. Why can't? Let's see. I don't know. Why can't I find the founders? Like, why is that such a big secret? Do I have to just scroll all the way to the bottom here? Because I did go through this. I was going through like all of this here, man. But um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know where you would find the founders. Maybe I just have to type it in. Rom Rumble. Ramble Lawn. I don't know, man. I'm going through too much to literally just find a name, but I just again, what I'm trying to say, guys, is I don't, I don't see. And maybe I'm uneducated, maybe I'm ignorant on these matters, but I don't see what the big deal of the patent is. I see that there's a connection between the creator of the Swift Coin uh, patent and the Fidelity patent that's that they have. You know that it's the same person. I I don't know if she works for Fidelity or maybe she's just got an in with Fidelity. You know, and that that does sound big and good. But man, again, I've I've seen people partner with IBM and it turned out to be nothing. You know, so like does it? It's partnerships are are one thing. It sounds exciting, but like really. There's plenty of things that partner up with companies that partner up with with big projects, and they end up doing nothing. So, um, I'm not I'm not too excited on that. And the main reason I keep hitting on all this stuff again is just to, when you watch this video, 
to try and help you maybe stay a little bit uh, level headed, you know. And maybe I'm being too level headed. Maybe I'm maybe I'm too bearish on this thing. But I'd rather be a bit conservative than just pie in the sky uh, with this thing. But I do want to say again the same thing that I started this video off with saying is that with the market cap that it has now, and I'm going off of the CoinGecko market cap with the $53 million market cap, this thing is 1,000 exable, a $60 billion market cap on something that has been around since 2017. Seems fair, seems very doable. That's a one, that's over a 1,000 X. Could this thing do a 1,000 X? Absolutely. Could it, you know, continue to be boring for the rest of its life? Maybe. There, there do seem to be some heavy players involved with this. Um, there definitely are some dots again that are connected in this video, and these guys do a really good job as well, Maximus Crypto. Um, but I still remain skeptical. You know, I want to see, I want to see more. Start doing different things, and you're already the one thing I can say that you're doing differently. The one thing. Hold up now. is that your RSI looks more bullish than it ever has. No, you don't have the strongest readings you've ever had, but you're maintaining strong readings longer than you ever have, right? Absolutely, it's longer. And if you start doing something you've never done before, it would look, it would look like this in the shape of this, right? Instead of going back below this line after getting above it, instead of going back below it and hanging out below it for the rest of your life, hanging out above it, consolidating above it, finding support on it instead of breaking back through it, that would be a really strong signal. Breaking out of an accumulation range, finding support on the, the point of breakout or even above it, you don't have to even touch that line. But but again, that's why you know I think buying as early as 0 0.0042 up here would be fine. If, if I was to DCA into this thing and I might, my style of investing and, and trading and stuff like that. I don't care to catch the exact bottom because you never know. You, it would make sense for it to go this low, but it, maybe there's more interest in this thing. Maybe there's you know more volume this cycle than we've ever seen before, right? Maybe you've got access on bigger exchanges that you've never had access to and you just don't go that low anymore, right? Because here, the all-time high on Coinbase before this breakout was right here. Maybe that's where you go. And you actually did tip that, to be fair. Maybe you go to the opening price and it's just right there. You know, who knows? Maybe you do go all the way back down to this like top point of consolidation here on a closing basis or literally the tip itself. You know, all, any and all of these numbers are fine to hit. And again, I think just the way that I would go about it is looking at the current price here if I could buy it at 33%, kind of like right in the middle of this whole zone, 33% down from where it is now, I don't care about this extra, you know, 4%, 7% down that I could potentially catch. I just, I want to get in, get in on it and then hold for the long haul. Um, because again, something like this, you guys, it, it really could do well. You don't need to put a thousand dollars into this thing. I understand some of you don't have a thousand dollars to just throw at anything, you know, but you could put with a thousand X, you could put $10 in this thing. $10 could turn into $10,000 with a thousand X. If it doesn't do a thousand X, it does a 500 X, which is still nuts. But it, a $30 billion market cap is definitely achievable. And it's at a very low market cap now at about 53 million. That's, that's a high amount of growth to see, but it's been accumulating for so long. When you accumulate like that for a long period of time and you start doing things differently and you act bullish and you see a breakout, Seeing a multi-billion dollar, even a tens of billions of dollars market cap from here, we've seen it in crypto, guys. We've seen it with coins that have existed for less time than this. So I'm not telling you to throw the bank at this thing. I certainly am not going to. I might involve a little bit of cash. You know, It'll probably be one of my smaller holdings, but that's also because it's got so much potential. Whenever you hear this high reward potential, that also comes with the, with the flavor of risk, right? A little bit of risk. So don't bet the farm on it. Don't throw all your life savings at it. If you did, maybe it pays off the best or maybe it just keeps doing what it's done its whole life and you miss out on all these other opportunities, right? Don't go selling your car. Don't go selling your, your Bitcoins for this thing. But if you have extra cash on the side and you're curious, this, this might be a good project, honestly. And don't just take my word for it, man. You know, do, and don't just take these guys' word for it either. Look into it. Do, do your best. You know, do your research. But shout out to Maximus Crypto. Shout out to Underdog Crypto one last time. Um, I very, very much recommend watching their uh, SwiftCoin videos, which again, this one specifically, but I'm sure all of these are good. Um, and this one specifically too. These guys seem like they know what they're talking about. Um, a little bit more than me. Not a little bit. Probably a lot more than me at least. But uh, yeah, I got, I got nothing else to say. So if you like the video, hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all for coming.
Take care. Bye-bye.